Okay, I think we're about ready to start. I'm hoping everybody can hear me all right. I'm sure you'll let me know in the in the chat if you can't. We'll try and do something about that. Um, thank you again for taking the time to join us today. Uh, my name is Jake Malander. I head up the customer account management team at RM. Uh, in the team, we have relationships with over 1,300 RM services customers. It's really good to see many of our customers attending the session today, as you, as you have done over the years at the various locations all across the country uh, when we've, uh, we've run the seminars in the more traditional way. Um, we welcome you, and we also welcome any attendees that are new to RM. I can see that there are plenty uh, of, uh, of you on the call. Um, so if this, this is the first time you've attended one of these events, then welcome. I hope everybody finds it useful, engaging, and interesting today. Um, so it's been said lots of times in recent weeks, so I'm not going to make too much of this, that we're experiencing very diff diff uh, different times at the moment. Um, we're all working in different ways. Most of us working from home or other remote locations, and, and many of you are, are experiencing the school closures at the moment, which is is, is making life challenging. Um, so for RM, we are faced with a decision. Should we go ahead with these seminars uh, because of the current climate, or potentially uh, should we wait till the autumn? And we absolutely decided we, we should go ahead for, for two very good reasons. The first one being uh, our customers need us more than ever right now to, to, to support them in the best ways of teaching and operating the school day from remote locations. We've taken lots and lots of inquiries over the past few weeks about getting up and running with Google, getting up and running with, with Microsoft technologies, extending networks to remote locations. So that was one very good reason to run these, these events. Um, the events would also make for great timing. As many of you heard last week, the DfE announced a funded initiative to support schools in working with partners like RM to adopt technologies like uh, Google or, uh, as we're discussing today, Microsoft's cloud technologies to enable more widespread remote learning. So um, the, uh, the, the th those were the two main reasons. The other reasons uh, were around using this kind of technology to inform us as to, 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 to whether we should be running events like this in the future, um, especially um, in future rounds of seminars. So a couple of reasons there. So um, we are offering two webinars this week. We did one yesterday. Uh, luckily, we recorded that one. That was the, the Google flavored version of, of today's webinar. Today's all about Microsoft. Um, and a quick word on the format for this session. Um, in a moment, I'll be handed over to Darren Baber. He's the principal support consultant with 22 years at RM of experience and a strong background in Microsoft products. Um, Phil Evans is also joining us. He's the operations manager for the Dudley Managed Service. Also has many years of experience with with Windows software too. We got so we got the experts in the room today to take us through the session. Uh, and then I'll be back um, shortly after they finish to host a question and answer session. We'd really like you to submit as many questions as you can throughout the presentation, uh, and we'll try and answer as many as we can in the Q&A session. Please use the chat window to, to, to do that. I can see many of you using that already. You're saying good morning to each other. Uh, everybody seems to be saying the sound is working okay, which is, is great. So that's it from me in terms of the introduction. Uh, it's now over to, to Darren and Phil for the main session. All right. Good morning, all. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. I want to get the app up and running. So bear with me one moment while I do that. As Jake said, I've uh, I've been at RM 21, 20 uh, 22 years. Um, I've been a I've been a coder, a developer at RM. I've been a team leader, and now running as a as a sort of support consultant slash technical architect. So I've done everything from CC4, Active Directory, now through to the to the sort of more, more new technologies coming along. So I'm embracing the cloud, Intune, Microsoft, um, Office 365, etc. So hopefully you can see my screen now so this session is as, as uh, jake has said it's supporting schools with remote and distance learning um, and we are going to be focusing on microsoft office 365 and some of the key technologies within that to, to help you um, in, these, in these 
different times. So as our agenda this morning, we're going to do a little bit of setting the scene. Um, we're going to how how you can navigate the noise. There's an awful lot of information. Um, we are going to focus quite a lot, mainly on Teams, because that is the unit and collaborative um, experience for for your remote uh, and distance learning and teaching. Um, Phil's going to then join and do a demonstration of some key points of Teams to show you around that um, from a from a civil education perspective. Um, and then, as Jake said, we'll we'll head into the Q and A. So it's uh, you know we know that coronavirus has changed how we all work and and teach and learn. A lot of you are at home. Some of you still may be at school at the moment as well, having to having to fill in there. Um, and this webinar is focusing on on Office three six five and how that can help with this the situation we find ourselves in. Um, we can't stress strongly enough um, about security, particularly when looking at remote teaching and learning and GDPR safeguarding and things like that. Um, and so random web apps, Zoom's had a lot of press recently. Um, a lot of people are taking it up and it's it's fine for certain activities, but perhaps not in the school where we, we need strong security and we can keep control um, over, over how we're doing that. So Microsoft Teams then, that is the key part of Office 365 that's being used for remote learning. Um, if we look at the stats from Microsoft, uh, Back in November 2019, it had about 20 million average users per day. That's more than doubled now to over 44 million um, at present. Um, and last week alone, Microsoft reported 62 billion meeting minutes just in one day. Uh, before you reach for calculators, I think it's something like 140,000 years worth of, of meetings. So more than enough to keep us going. This slide is, is a Microsoft slide so showing a journey from a, a school having no tenant at the moment, so no cloud presence on the left, through to the right to a school who's fully embraced Office 365. They're using Teams. They're doing remote teaching and learning. Um, I guess that's that's quite a relevant slide now when we've got this new DFE initiative that Jake mentioned. Um, so if you're if you are at the left hand side of this, you can apply for this DFE funding um, and. RM can assist you in, in implementing that, um, and, and we can do that, obviously, for Office and for Google, um, but this session is, is, is around Office and, and Microsoft products. The um, green and yellow boxes on here, the identity deployment, the group creation, we can do that today through our RM Unify product. Um, that will automate through from your MIS solution through to Office 365 to auto-provision your users, um, or to provision groups if you've got it in the right sync mode. Um, and we have produced scripts, um, PowerShell scripts, to do the final part to, to actually turn those groups into teams. So a little bit more on that DFE initiative. Um, I've, sa I've said there it is for greenfield schools. Um, that's in italics. There is a condition that if you have started down the journey, you've you've done something in Office 365 or Google, um, but you haven't actually provisioned any students. You are still eligible, um, but you can read all about it on the links that are that are in this presentation that we'll share later, um, and sign up for your tenancy. Then select an implementation partner, as we say there. Possibly don't leave that to chance. Have a look at what we can offer here. Um, but as we say, we we can do Microsoft Office 365 or G Suite. So navigating the noise, what's one of the best ways that, that I would recommend you do is, is go to the rm.com homepage. So um, there's a, a large number of us in RM who've been pulling a lot of the data that's out there from Microsoft, from Google, selecting the key relevant bits for, you, for yourselves, um, and then presenting that through our website so that you can click through to the, to the relevant links. So if I quickly uh, have a look at that so on the RM homepage, and the coronavirus section, click on distance learning. This is where the internet is slow, suddenly slow. There's uh, a new section at the top there about the DFE initiative that you can follow, um, a section from Google, following on from Dave's yesterday, um, and then a section from, uh, from us on the Microsoft uh, top tips, top links. Um, you can see videos here. Um, from Phil um, that he's put together already. And then there are various links to 
Microsoft webinars, which are which are also very good to get a deeper dive into Teams, um, especially from an admin perspective, if you need to see some of that. Uh, PDF files for quick start guides that you can hand out to your staff if they've not up to up, up to speed and on board with Teams. So we would we'd recommend you go and, and, and browse that and, and get the, as much as you can out of it. So some key updates from Microsoft in response to the coronavirus. Um, so Teams has always been free as part of the Office 365 A1 license. Um, and as part of the their response, they've made it available if you've got a Gmail or Outlook account, um, and you'll get it free to Jan 2021. Um, like I've just mentioned, there's that quick start guide there to help teachers and learners. Um, so that's a very good place to start if you've, if you've not delved into, you know, you know, dug around in Teams much. Um, and something here now is that SDS is a has has traditionally been used to auto create teams from your MIS. It's it's a Microsoft um, solution that's there to take data. It, it sends for schools data sync. It takes data from your MIS um, and either through some APIs or through CSV files, you can pump that data through into Office three six five and it will auto provision your users your groups and traditionally it used to create the teams. That last step has been switched off in SDS um, for a number of reasons, I guess, for throughput coming into teams as, as we all went into lockdown and also so that it gives educators the chance to select which actual groups they need to create a team from. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, some new features. Obviously, Microsoft are constantly updating teams. We've seen recently the introduction of three by three videos. So you can have a grid when you're, you're um, in class meetings. Um, there's custom video backgrounds available now, um, although that is a double edged sword. And we'll talk about security of teams in a little while that um, there are ones you can select from or you can upload your own. So you may not want to do that for all your all your pupils and only educators can start meetings now. So more security features to uh, to help there. So what is a Microsoft team? So <clears throat> it is it is a, a way of bringing together many of the Office 365 jigsaw pieces into a collaborative space. So when you create a class team in, in the education version, it is essentially under the bonnet creating an Office 365 group, a mailbox, which facilitates the chat, a calendar, which then facilitates your meetings, um, a planner, um, a stream, section for your videos that you create, a SharePoint site for your document library. So if you upload a file during a chat in a team, that goes into your SharePoint site um, or your SharePoint document library for this team. And it then creates for the edgy version, a OneNote class notebook for collaboration and an assignment section, as well as some other things that, uh, that you can, we'll show you in the demo. So that's a, that's a view there of, of what a uh, standard sort of Microsoft team looks like once you've created it in Edu. Phil will take you through that in a little bit more detail shortly. So teams and security, we do recommend that um, <clears throat> you review the default team security policies. Um, the Microsoft device is to go in there and set your most restrictive at the global level and then open up for staff or or for the certain groups you want to. Um, but then, you know, so you're you're really stopping Teams becoming something like a WhatsApp uh, type of application for the pupils. Um, for example, would you want pupils creating Teams um, and then adding their own sort of peers to it? Probably not. So as a team is, is an Office 365 group, if you deny access to creating Office 365 groups, you deny pupils the creation of Teams. Um, we do have PowerShell scripts to lock down to a default level. Um, and there's a link there that that we'll share later with you there that you can read a little bit more about the privacy and the security of Teams. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of Teams meetings, um, like I say, you, that will go into the planner. You will create, you can create meetings for um, interactions between teachers and pupils. And that's a standard meeting like, like we would do where they can open their microphone, you can have chats, etc. cetera. Um, but you can also switch to a, Teams live meeting if all you want to do is a live presentation to people and then run a Q&A at the end. So very similar to what we're doing today, but there's a Teams live meeting uh, within the product. And something I use a lot in RM 
is to set up a, a meet now session. So I just meet with myself, um, seems odd, but I do that so I can then record that meeting. Um, and it's usually a piece of training that I can then onward uh, share with my, my colleagues in RM. Of course, you can use that in education for pre-recording lessons and then sharing them within that team um, because those are then available in uh, stream. And finally, you can switch on closed captions if desirable, if you need to have subtitles, etc., on the meetings. So <clears throat> in terms of now and coming soon, there's some sort of recommendations here from Microsoft before you actually have your meeting, you create your class, you actually schedule a channel meeting. Phil will show you a little bit more about that. Um, update your meeting options so that you're making yourself, yourself the presenter and the pupils actually the guests within that session so they can't take over control over the presentation etc um, you can choose a custom background when you start the meeting um, do an at mention out to the class to join um, admit any people from the lobby so in teams you can by default anyone who's a member of that team will be automatically admitted to the meeting but you can use the lobby for parents if you are running a session where the parents are being involved etc um, mute all the attendees etc and start your recording then during the meeting you present your content play videos etc using system sound to make sure they can hear what's coming out of your de your device um, <clears throat> and Coming soon are things like seeing the student faces. Obviously, we've seen that three by three video so that you can you can get that uh, now. Um, and after the meeting, signaling the meeting has ended is a new feature. Exporting the attendance, quite a handy thing for the teachers there to see who did turn up um, or didn't. Um, and then getting the student's pulse, you could run a, um, a quick survey to see how much they understood about that session and finally muting their comments so that you've drawn a line under that meeting. I won't go through that screen because that's an awful lot of, of information to digest, but it's, um, it'll be on the PDF that we send out later. So this is a handy FAQ from, from Microsoft as to what can I or how do I do certain things in Teams meetings. Um, and this is, a, this is a thing that we've been doing for, um, for our Unify and I've written M365 or Office 365 customers. We do have PowerShell scripts, as I say, that where we can auto-populate teams and set these default security levels. Um, it locks down the teams. Like I said earlier, then the pupils don't turn this into a WhatsApp solution and they're not chatting or videoing each other and, and using it for bullying or any other activities you wouldn't want it to be used for. Um, it's, it's all linked in as it's using our Immunify and the group sync um, option within that to create the groups already in Office 365. Um, and from there, the SDS restriction that we've seen today where that is still not, will not auto populate the teams, they're leaving it up to the educators. Um, our script doesn't doesn't use SDS obviously because it's, it's, it's just using the group. So we're not uh, gonna be affected by that. So if I hand back or hand over to Phil. Let me just stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Darren. So I'll um, into my share screen. So yes, welcome. My name is Philip Evans, and I'm here to do a very quick demo of Teams. Um, it'll be a very whistle-stop tour. Um, hopefully, you've uh, had some experience of it. If you haven't, you'll, you'll get a, a bit of a flavour for it. There are uh, plenty of uh, videos, including ones I've recorded on the COVID-19 page on rm.com, um, but also plenty on the Microsoft website as well. So I'm, I'm not going to be going through every nuance of Teams. Um, so. Just confirm that, uh, Darren, you can see my screen. Yeah. Yes, you're, you're showing up. Okay, so um, you may have tried SharePoint and potentially Skype possibly in your, your schools and educational establishments, and I don't think either worked very well in, in that setting. Um, Skype seemed to need lots of firewall rules enabling, and SharePoint a little bit clunky, especially with checking in and checking out and permissions and that sort of thing. And I think teams have have, uh, have really embraced those uh, shortcomings and I think they've cracked it as it helps with collaboration, improves communication 
and being cloud-based, it's convenient um, with various apps on your phone as well as the full desktop version as well. So as I say, I'm going to do a very quick uh, demo. It'll hopefully whet your appetite and uh, we'll start with collaboration. So think of Teams as your, um, your secure network share in the cloud. So it's uh, a place to store your documents, uh, similar to your local server uh, T drive, for example. Um, but it's accessible from anywhere, so you don't have to then dial it back into your server uh, to be able to access it. So you can access it from any browser. And version control, that's another good thing. So previously, you might have been emailing around versions of the same document. Um, can you edit this and send it back to me? With Teams, you can work on the same document at the same time with multiple users. So that version control is gone. And you don't need to check it in and out like you did with SharePoint if you've ever used SharePoint before. So you, you, as long as it's an Office uh, 365 document, you can uh, have multiple users accessing it at the same time. Uh, once you've uh, got access to Teams, uh, you can, in theory, if you've got permissions, create a new team. And um, once you create one, you would go into Manage Team to select who you want to be owners of that team or members of that team. And each, each team has channels underneath it. So by default, there's always a general, and then you can add new channels below. So typical channels that you'd have below would be maybe departments, subject matter, year groups, for example, in this, this, this one here. And each channel has a message board, as we can see here. This is for announcements, um, things like, uh, as, as we've got here, Forest School is launched, there's a fire drill going to happen next Tuesday, things that anybody in that team needs to know about. You can use the uh, at sign to specifically mention a specific person within the team or the whole team. If you type uh, at teaching and learning, you'll get uh, a, a notification to anybody who's in that team. And that appears in that activity bell at the top there. There'll be a, a little one to say that a new action has got your name mentioned in it. Um, in, in all the channels, you also have a files area. So as Darren mentioned, that's your SharePoint document repository. Uh, you can create your new folder structures and drag and drop uh, up to 10 files in one go um, from your local hosted uh, drives. And that can then also be accessed through SharePoint if needed. Uh, you can add additional tabs across the top. So here we've got a, sh a staff notebook, which is uh, using OneNote. Uh, you've got school improvement here that we've created using Planner. So that's a little bit like Trello if you've ever used that, where you can um, put specific tasks towards a, a project, say school improvement. You could list all the issues that Ofsted have flagged up for you and then uh, allocate them to individuals within that team and then do checklists to see which bits have actually been completed and, uh, and, and assigned. And you can add as many as you like using the plus button. Obviously, the main uh, Office 365 ones are at the top, but there's a plethora of other third party ones that you may already have links within your school that you can then import and link into Teams into your group. OK, so we'd recommend having a team structure similar to what we've got here, where you've got a teaching and learning area for your uh, lesson plans and your content for, for teaching and learning, probably broken down by year groups. Um, an SLT area for for the senior leadership team for that uh, be uh, for appraisals, uh, maybe interview notes, that sort of thing. Obviously restricted to those people. And as uh, as I didn't mention before, if you're not in the team, you don't get to see that. So if you're not a member of the SLT, you won't even see that listed in your your group of teams. Um, we'd also recommend a staff room area, and that would have um, again your general announcements for. Um, things like fire alarms or welcomes to new, new joiners, et cetera, but also a policies and procedures area where you can store all of your key policies there in one place electronically, as opposed to in uh, folders pinned to the staff room. Uh, so one uh, useful tip here. So if you do launch a new policy and procedure in the files here, you can then um, copy that link, add it to a post, uh, explain, you know, there's a new policy online, it's been updated, can you please read and understand it uh, and make sure that you click on the thumbs up, so a bit, a bit similar to Facebook, you click on the thumbs up to say that you've read and understood it and then you can actually see who's actually um, approved and, and therefore read that document. So you've got effectively an audit trail rather than lots of signatures on a notice board 
to say that that, that document, that policy has been read and understood. Um, so these are all uh, uh, staff um, staff teams, and um, as I mentioned, ten, tens uh, the maximum you can drag and drop uh, or upload in the uh, the app. Although if you open in SharePoint, you can upload more um, by clicking on that and, and and dragging more than the ten ten limit. Um, but what I wouldn't recommend is doing a whole lift and shift from your server into Teams. Uh, 40 gig, etc. Uh, you will find either the browser or the app or your internet will, will grind to a halt and something will stop it and you won't know which files have actually copied and which ones haven't. So um, doing it step by step, getting your team structure set up first, ideally replicating that structure on your server and getting the staff to, to um, work in that new structure, put your documents um, in that new new place and they'll be more familiar. It'll be an easier transition to move into Teams if they're used to knowing where the documents are. And if you're like any of the schools that I work with, you've probably got 10, 15 years worth of dross on your server that, that probably is a good opportunity to spring clean and um, consolidate and actually have just the files that you really want to work on in Teams. So uh, there isn't really a data limit as such, but you, you, you certainly don't want to be dragging 15 years worth of, of dross into, uh, into Teams to avoid avoid it. There is also a character uh, limit. So if you've got too many uh, folders within folders within folders, then have a long file name, uh, Charles Dickens works, etc. then there will come a point where that reaches its limit and it will throw an error and stop that uh, copying across. So we would recommend using a cloud migration tool uh, and RM do, do have that as an option that, that does a full migration. It tells you what files are too long. It tells you which files aren't able to be copied as opposed to kind of blindly dropping them in and hoping that it's worked. So as I say, Teams links into all the Office uh, 365 products. Um, I recommend Forms, which is very similar to SurveyMonkey, but a bit better because you get real-time results and graphs and can export it straight into Excel. But there's also a quizzes section within Forms, which is really handy for teaching and learning where you can set the students' quizzes and it automatically marks the multiple choice uh, answers, for example. Uh, one note, you can use that for minutes within your team. So real time minutes and not having to type them up after the um, the weekly staff briefing, for example, you could have somebody typing them up as they go along and that will just store it in, in your staff notebook within the team. And um, as I say, these are staff uh, teams, uh, so very different to the student ones. So you click on create and join a team um, these are the, the four options that you've got at the moment and staff is the one predominantly you'll be using as, as a teachers but the class one is also quite powerful and fairly new uh, it does it because it takes a couple of minutes to set that up I've created one blue Peter style earlier uh, the main difference between a class team and a, a normal staff team is the class notebook so it's an extension of OneNote uh, where each student gets their own notebook and also the teacher can access that notebook. And as a class, you also get a shared collaborative notebook so you can do um, collaborative projects and, uh, and work in where you're asking them to do a little team exercise, for example, in a collaborative area. Or you can just set them an assignment and pass it to all the notebooks within in your class and then they can hand that to work back in for you to mark. In addition to that, you've also got these two new tabs, assignments and then grades. Assignments, pretty much as you'd imagine, pretty straightforward. I'm going to click on one I've created earlier just to, to demonstrate it quicker than uh, it would do by, by default. So what I've done here, I've used a Microsoft form to create a quiz. So in this case, the students have uh, come back from Blenheim Palace and I want to check that they understood what they, uh, what they visited. So got various questions on here they'd select it because it's within the tenancy you'll know which student has has completed the form as well the quiz um, they press submit and that then appears in their um, in their assignments and you'll be able to see what scores that the class got how many people have handed it in and you can add comments feedback etc uh, the grades area very similar you can actually grade uh, assignments and also you've got this assignments button here as a student you'll be able to see your own assignments that, um, that your teacher has assigned to you. 
Um, again, using the at signs, you can you can um, you can use that. But also, as soon as you assign something, it will go in that activity window in the top uh, top window here. Um, so that's that's I think where distant learning can really come into its own. Um, I think key stage two and above probably is the best age for that classroom uh, activity. Um, but if it's for younger year groups, there's there's no reason why you can't still teach um, a YouTube style. I think most kids are used to watching YouTube from an early age, um, following YouTubers, etc. And you can be your very own YouTuber um, by, as Darren mentioned, recording yourself. Uh, so to do that, click on the calendar and you select Meet Now. Um, I'm not going to actually select, select Join now because when I tried this, it did chuck everybody out of our, our demo. So I'm not going to do that just in case. But um, you don't have to have the camera on uh, for the camera shy people. Those that do, you've got the blurred background or the uh, additional um, additional backgrounds that Microsoft have, uh, have put in there. So you could be on a, a sunset beach or in a classroom or a seminar room. And um, obviously, you've got your, your mic. You want that enabled. Definitely recommend using a headset as opposed to shouting at your laptop. Uh, you select join now. And then there's three dots where you can start recording. You can select your screen and um, uh, share your screen out and away you go. So you, you you do your presentation, you could share a PowerPoint slide deck, you could uh, access videos, etc. And uh, once you start recording, the the audio and the video that you've just recorded using your, um, your, using your session will appear in your My Video section, so here. So this is where you go into streams. It will send you an email to say that that video has been been completed and compressed takes between five and 15 minutes, depending on how long you, you want your lesson to go for. Now, by default, and it's not possible to change, that contact is only visible, visible within your tenancy. So you can click on share and you can select the link and share it to your students, put a, um, a web link into your, into your team, into your group. Uh, you can post it on as a new message. Look what I've done today. I've recorded a how-to lesson on so forth. And, um, and therefore, you can uh, you can do that and uh, paste it in there. Um, if you do need to have it outside of your tenancy in stream, you can download it. They're, they're quite big files, but you can download it and then it upload it to any other streaming website. So that is, again, really good for distant learning. The teachers that, that feel shackled at home and, and feel they, they want to be effectively back into the classroom but don't necessarily want to have the risk of um, trying to do a, a call conference uh, with their students, then then that's one way of doing it. It's very one way, so it's not very interactive, but at least you can see how many views uh, you've had and any comments about that. Maybe do a quiz at the end to make sure that they've understood it. So um, as well as that, obviously, uh, as Darren mentioned, there's Zoom uh, that's out there, and I've heard some schools are using it. Uh, we wouldn't recommend it, at least with Microsoft, you know it's going to be secure. It's not going to be hived off to, to Chinese hackers or anything like that. So. Uh, the um, the actual communication within your team, within your staff, um, is is key, and the video conferencing is it works really well. Whereas Skype didn't, Teams just just does. Uh, as long as you've got a fairly decent broadband connection, that will work for you. So I'm hoping again a very whistle stop tour of Teams. Hopefully, sweat your appetite. There are videos, as I say, on the um, COVID nineteen page. Uh, whereas a more in depth uh, look into Office 365 and how it links into Teams, but also if you Google Microsoft for Educators, there's, um, there's 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 handy tips as well as what's on on the Microsoft uh, on the Microsoft and RM websites. Um, so that's that's it for me. Hopefully that was a useful tour, and then I think we'll hand back over to Jake for um, questions and answers. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Uh, and thank you, Darren, as well, for a um, really interesting session there. Lots of comments coming through on the on the chat box. Um, lots of engagement with that, which is great to see. So what we're going to do now is we're just um, going to review the questions that we've, we've had in. Encourage you to ask any more questions uh, between now and 11.30. We'll do our best to get through those. For any that we can't get through uh, because of time we're going to publish answers to those questions on our website uh, including any observations that, that you've made if, if we can't tackle those today we will 
uh, come back to those on the website and try and get you answers uh, for those. So let's um, let's get going with the first question. Um, we are using Teams for remote learning. Many students from disadvantaged families are struggling to cope with remembering login passwords. Are there any quick password reset options without going via IT support desk? Um, <clears throat> sorry, this is Darren. I'll pick that one up, Sly Philip. Unless, um, yeah, that's so, fine. I was going to suggest Unify, but um, you go for it. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, if, if you're going through RM Unify, that's one one bonus and one option. Um, if you're standard Office 365, um, then there is there are self-service password reset options within that as well. Um, so you can, you can enable them, them the option to sort of change their password if they've forgotten it without without then phoning the IT support desk, but that is also available through RM Unify as well. Thank you, Darren. Uh, so next one, join an actual video audio Teams meeting. Can you easily bring up a Word document to talk through on all meeting attendees screens? I can only find a way of doing this with a PowerPoint file or having to share broadcast someone's screen from within Teams. Uh, Darren, fill on that one. Yeah, so uh, you should be able to share out a, a, a Word document or indeed any browser um, tab that you've got open um, specifically as opposed to sharing the whole of your screen. Um, but what you might find, it's not, it's not available through the browser version of Teams. So what I demonstrated um, earlier was using the full-fledged Windows app that's free. Uh, you go onto Teams and there's a download option there. That does give you a bit more flexibility in what you can share out, specifically on, on video conferencing. So yeah, I definitely use the app as opposed to using the browser version for that. Thank you, Phil. In comparison to Google, how does Teams function from a mobile device? Good question. So it, it, um, yeah. Phil, are you yeah. uh, so able I've, to take that? I've, I've used that on, on my phone. You do need a specific app. Um, it doesn't work that good in the browser experience. Um, but to be fair, I don't think the Google um, uh, apps work. The uh, Google browser experience works on phones very well as well. They, they prefer you to install an Android app. And the same goes for Teams. So the Teams for iOS, um, for iPads, and um, Android works works very well. Uh, you can get notifications or turn them off if you need to. Um, and video and call conferencing works just as well using the phone camera as well. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. got no I've got no reference point for Google, but I, I use Teams on my phone all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. Me too. It does work well. Uh, next question: Some of our governors trustees have multiple Teams accounts and causes issues with, and this causes issues with managing them. Are there any platforms or advice to help with this? Who wants to take that one? <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not sure on that one. Actually, I don't know if Phil's got anything, but I've. I've not. Not really uh, had a look into that. It was might be one we take offline, um, yeah. and and I'm, get back to Stuart later. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure why they'd have multiple Teams accounts because no. you know, in theory, I mean, I guess if they're trustees of various different schools, they might have different uh, different accounts, and therefore having to remember to log on to the relevant one to go on to to which team could be an issue. Um, I know uh, I've worked with them at uh, I used to be a governor on, and they had a tenancy for the mat and a separate tenancy for the different schools. And so as a governor, um, I had to, to work on both. And all I did was effectively used a different browser. So I used Chrome for the one and Edge for the other. And then if I needed a third, I used Firefox to-, to Or go in, yeah, incognito browsing and, and incognito, go into the Teams exactly. app on each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can sign out in and out of Teams um, but yeah, in terms of managing those accounts, it is a bit more tricky. It, it does, does involve having multiple usernames and passwords, unfortunately. Uh, we are a match. Some schools have started on the journey already and some haven't. Some are Google, some are Teams, some are nothing. Can we use the initiative, and I assume that means the, the DFE uh, initiative, to pull it all together into one tenant trust-wide uh, solution? Um, I, I actually just engaged with an expert from RM while that question came up on the screen. 
Um, so it's so, and I use Teams to do that as well. So if the initiative, um, if sorry, if the question is around uh, eligibility, that our advice would be for you to engage with the process um, to to see if you are eligible. It, it sounds quite encouraging from what's been um, written there. Uh, there is up to ten thousand pounds worth of funding available for multi academy trust within the initiative. So it would be definitely worth you uh, you engaging with the process. Uh, I don't know if Darren and Phil have got anything else to add to that from a technical point of view. I think um, from from a Matt's point of view, it is probably wise to pick one ecosystem as opposed to have multiple yeah. ones. But like you say, some if they've and maybe choose uh, one of the schools that have really gone to town with it, and maybe you know use them as your um, your master site and use them to teach the others. Because I think if they've really gone to town and then all of a sudden you say, I'm sorry, we're going to go Google now or we're going to go Microsoft uh, Teams, they might feel a bit, bit uh, annoyed about that. But it depends, I guess, on how much control you want as a mat, how much um, synergy you want between the schools. Um, I mean, they, they do work similar, but in different ways, um, yeah. but, but they're not, unfortunately, truly compatible with each other, unfortunately. Thanks, Phil. Is anyone here from an infant school? I don't know if anyone answered this on the chat. Any idea of how this can work for young children or is it all directed at older pupils? So uh, any any view, Darren, Phil, on the key stage one uh, experience? I've not, I've not come across any schools that have used it for key stage one yet. Um, but having said that, I think kids are, are brought up on technology now and they d adapt very quickly. I think if they can get logged in, if your parents can get them logged in, um, then I don't see why why not. Um, again, yeah, I can, I more can't the see the of the teacher more than the students. I think. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm primary and hoping it will cover this age. Ah, right. I think that is the um, a reinforcement to the answer to the question around the the age grid question. I made a SharePoint site for sending workout in a primary school, and it's worked very well. More more commentary there. Great. Uh, with live meeting not working on A1, do you need to upgrade one license to A3? The broadcasting user question mark. That's a good. James has, has got that right. Yes, that's a good point. The if if you are going to use Microsoft Live um, as a live Teams meeting, you do need an A3 license to do that. Um, I'm not sure in terms of the attendees if if they need that. I'd need to check that up. But I, th I think you it may just be the 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 one presenting. Um, I don't know if Phil has got any further. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you're probably no. right. I think you're right. It'll be we'll whoever, check that so. up, James. And... Uh, our, our Immunify syncs with the local AD. How would a password reset by the user using our Immunify work in that scenario? Anyone on that one? Um, Phil, Phil, do you want that or do you want me to? I'll let you have that one if you don't mind. Okay. Don't. <laughs> okay. So is the, are you doing the password reset at Unify level or at the AD level? And are you using network provisioning or, or where's James? I guess James can't really speak back. Chat. Okay, yeah, so some stuff coming up level. in the chat. AD yeah. local level. Ah, uh, thanks, James. So I guess if you are using are in Unify at the AD local level, um, and you've either got AD sync or, or network provisioning, that will sync that password up to to Unify, which will then re, uh, reflect that in Office 365. Mm -hmm. But obviously that depends on what version of RM Unify you're running. Um, Question from Mark, are the PowerShells chargeable or included in core packages? That is a very good question. Um, so at the moment, we are producing, the, I guess the PowerShells are produced as, as part of the DNF, DFE initiative. So we can have a um, a single sort of, and as automated as we can process to get schools um, up and running as quick as possible. Um, it's something we're exploring. And, and if you think it, it would be good as a service, um, we're happy to talk to you about that. Um, so it's, it, it is something that I think we can run those PowerShells elsewhere. Um, and it, it's something that, yeah, talk to your account manager and we can look at, at the best way to, uh, to take that forward. Uh, long question here from Julie. Let's try and do this one. Uh, we have the full Office 365 A1 Plus package for all pupils and most staff. 
with A5 for a handful of users, and we often find, not just recently, that Stream struggles to play during early afternoon sessions for A1 staff. While it seems likely to be due to the, mem the number of users online at that time of day, is there anything we can do to make the experience better? Our RM network team have checked servers, switches, etc., and nothing on site seems to be affecting it. So a question around performance there, I think. I've not had a lot of experience with that, Phil. Have you, have you done much with... It seems like, is that an internal to the school thing, is it, at the moment, when, when they're getting that afternoon yeah. outage? I mean, actually, stream, stream is, is a bit like YouTube. It is broadcasting down your WAN, as opposed yeah. to it's not coming locally within the school. Uh, I guess an option is to download the stream and then put it on the server would be a, an option and have it played locally as opposed to through stream if broadband contention was the issue. Um, It'd be interesting yeah. to find out who the broadband provider is here and, mm. and do some checks on on what sort of bandwidth is being consumed at that point. Yeah. So and, and seeing if we are maxing out when you know in the afternoon just because you know, the various uh, various and conditions it, causing causing that. And if it's in a lesson, it's probably best to have the teacher broadcast the the, the video and the, the the students watch it as opposed to each of them watching it at the same time. That would probably yep. help. Okay, thanks guys. Another question from Julie. Can you set permissions on documents shared within Teams? We are setting up a group for interviews and want to share some confidential application packs to interviewers. Obviously, we don't want each interviewee to see each other's packs. Might be too risky to attempt without some practice. Uh, question around permissions. I guess this comes down to channels, private mm -hmm. teams, and the, the users you have within each channel. Would you say that, Phil? Yeah, seems to me. If, if, if you're not a member of a, a team, you won't even see those documents. Uh, whereas, no. I guess if you would open up that team and that fo folder structure, anybody who's in that team would, by default, be able to see it. But I do know you can, if you open in SharePoint, you can restrict it further to block certain folders or certain files from being accessed within a team through SharePoint. How is the data backed up? So I guess in terms of Office 365, because that Teams is part of that, you have all the the standard sort of data retention and um, versioning, et cetera, within Office 365. Um, at the moment, I don't think we're recommending a, a sort of cloud to cloud backup for Office, are we? Um, it, it, we're, we're relying on the, the Office background backup. Um, you can archive Teams um, and the data will, will persist. Um, if you delete a team, you have options of, of getting that back within the retention period and not losing any of that data. So I think it's 90 days, isn't it, by default? Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Darren. Uh, if you want a video to be uploaded in a channel, you cannot put it in the lock class materials area. Is it equally secure in files? Question on that one. By secure as in nobody else can access it, yes, I would say. Um, yeah, only the only yeah, the members only of that team will see, will see, see that file. Yeah. Or the members of that channel, because I think like we like Phil said earlier, you can have a team um, and you can have multiple channels and within each channel you can change the uh, the ownerships and the members of that of each channel. Good point, Anne, and that, that's the, you know, you don't want the kids to mess with, that's what we talked about, the team security and, mm -hmm. and ensuring it's locked down so that you have a, a secure baseline, so perhaps you're not letting them set up chats with each other so that you remove any bullying type of aspects, you don't want let them to create teams for similar reasons, so that that's all, all something that, you know, there are Microsoft webinars about it, obviously we've spoken about PowerShell scripts and talking to your account manager about those if you're not going through the initiative. Thank you. Class Notebook will not let me upload any files on insert. File is faded, so I cannot click on it. Any ideas what I have done wrong? Thank you for the question, Cheryl. I guess that for me, to make sure that you've got the Teams app and the Notebook app, the full version, running as opposed to the browser versions, because um, although there's lots of similarities on the browser versions, there's a few functionalities that, that, that are missing. I'm not aware of inserting file as being one of them, but that would be my first tip is make sure you've got the full version of Teams and the full OneNote app 
installed on, on your machine. Question from John. I'm using a fairly old Dell Chromebook to access Teams. Are there any restrictions, drawbacks compared to a full installation? I think only other than it is the browser version, although you install an app, it is pretty much the browser version on a Chromebook. Um, so there will be some restrictions on uh, the video conferencing, for example, and sharing screens, uh, etc. cetera. But um, in terms of accessing the files and, and doing things like that, not, not many drawbacks really. Great, thank you. We currently use SharePoint for staff room, documents, et cetera. Would you suggest we move all of this to Teams? Question from Lisa. That's a good question. You can, Lisa, set up um, Teams and within Teams, you can add a new tab that, that points at that SharePoint library. So you don't have to move it all. Um, so you, you can just reuse that, that SharePoint library within, within a new team. You can, you can point to that if it, if it helps. Um, I don't know if you can automatically create a team from a SharePoint library. That would always be very handy, but I don't, I don't think that exists today. Question from Dex. Uh, we are currently in the middle of choosing which route to go down to so have both Teams and Google Classroom, Classroom deployed. Would you make a decision to go down one single route or embrace both? And I could see there was quite a bit of engagement in the chatter around this one of, of some of our customers' experiences. What's the RM view, Darren and Phil? I, I, I don't see why you have to go to one single route. Um, I know a lot of schools that have gone for Teams for the staff and Google Classroom for the students and kept it separate that way. Um, yeah, but they're, they've both got pros and cons. Um, and I recommend seeing David's video from yesterday to have a look at the Google side of things. Um, yeah, I, I think there's yeah, pros and cons. Just, and, and, yeah. and we, 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 we are agnostic in terms of those ecosystems, so we wouldn't necessarily one, say one's better or the other. I mean, yeah. me and Darren have got our own personal opinions and David's got his personal <laughs> opinions, no doubt. But um, yeah, I think there's, there's pros and cons for sticking with one ecosystem and mixing and matching. Yeah. The, the beauty of it is the students are pretty, pretty good at picking up either one. That, that you, uh, I've seen demonstrations where students have never even seen Google Classroom and just picked it up and the same with Teams. I've seen staff that are quite... Yeah. Um, IT, yeah. IT fearful and they go, oh, this is easy. It's just like yeah. Facebook, you know, so I think that they've, they've come a long way, um, both ecosystems really. Yeah, and some, some good responses in the uh, in the chat. They're just coming through as you're talking about other uh, schools' experience of that. Some saying they use Classroom for students, Teams uh, for, for staff. That's one way uh, some of our customers are making it work. And some of them just saying take the both, they're the best from both systems. So, um uh, some different experiences out there. Here's another question from Lee. Is there a way to announce assignments with a link in the message board? It automatically does this when the assignment is set for all students, but not when it is targeted to a subset of students and you can discuss documents with the, the team. Who wants um, that one? I mean, they're, they're, Phil, if he, if he felt okay. he'd answer. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so in theory, most things you post into Teams, there's a, a, a three dots to the right of it where you can copy link and then you can paste that into an announcement and do the at sign for that class to alert them about some new new bits that's been added to uh, the assignment. Um, so, yeah. That was think, good. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to suggest the at symbol and do at team name and and um, yeah, you know, there's a new uh, a new bit of homework or a new. Yeah, I think we've covered that one, haven't we? I think we've yeah we've yeah, basically we've covered that one. Oh. I have two teams accounts, one for schools, one for dot uh, gov dot uk. It's a real pain as the teams app does not like signing in and out and seems to need an uninstall. I end up using different. Uh, devices. So more of a comment, but um, and any any observations on this one? I think that goes back to the incognito browsing. If you're mm -hmm. if you're going to be uh, needing it, um, possibly you know the the full app for the one you use the most, incognito for the one you may be using less yeah. often. Um, I, I tend to have at the moment because I, I tend to have the same Teams account, but I have Teams as an app and Teams in 
Chromium Edge running as well. So if I'm working on a presentation on one, I can answer chat on the other without getting annoyed because I've clicked on a notification mm -hmm. and it's zoomed me off. So that's just... good advice. Uh, Vanessa's asking, we want to enable the weekly assignments digest for parents to have some kind of overview on what is being asked of their children in the current climate. With the restrictions on SDS tools at present, is there any way of us being able to enable this? I'm not sure the SDS restriction applies to that. Um, the, I think the SDS restriction is just that final step where um, it, the SDS will, depending on what you're using for the for the SDS data um, syncing, it, it creates the Office 365 group, but it doesn't create the team. So if you've got the teams already, um, I may have to look a little bit deeper, though, into the weekly assignments digest and, and, and as Phil's played with that. No, no, but it sounds like she wants to share it, share it with her parents. Um, right. And, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, you can ex you can have external people in in your team, but it's not necessarily the best idea, and it's going to be a bit clunky. Um, yeah. I guess if you're using Integris, you could use Parent Portal and and put some comments in there. I guess, but um, yeah, I, 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 other than a few screenshots or, or stuff on the website. I can't think of a, an easy way to give parents access to their child's work. Uh, we are using Teams as a whole primary school. Is there any? Uh, is there a way we can delete comments in chats from children? So you kind of covered this in the presentation, Darren. Is there, is there any advice here? Uh, I think you, as an owner of the team, I think you sh can we delete the chats as the owner? trying to think back to um you can you can i mean you can definitely stop them putting the chats in um mm -hmm. i need i will possibly need to take that offline and have a quick check as, as to what you can do okay we'll um, we'll respond to that yeah. one on the yeah. on the website thank you um a couple of minutes left how will teams fit into the rm support <laughs> framework um so um i guess is a question about how you know how we'll support this for our existing contract customers a good question if my clerks was here i'd push it over to him but <laughs> <laughs> as the support representative i guess you know yes we support office 365 and teams is is part of that so it, it will yeah. be we're training people up we have uh, uh google google classroom is very effective uh version control showing student activity on every update they make does teams have the same amount of version control um Anyone got a view on that that might be uh, knowledgeable on Google too? Um, well, I guess the somebody did answer that in in the chat as well. So in in uh, when you go into OneDrive, SharePoint, and you look at your files, you can look at the uh, at the history of those files. You can go back to um, you know updates, and it and it shows you a historical view. Um, I think somebody put that there was about 500 versions that will let you go back to. Um, I've not seen how Google Classroom differs. So, are there any obstacles to consider for use in an SEN school? Um, thanks for that one. It's a good question. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the when you're doing teams meetings teams recordings you can turn on the closed captions and mm -hmm. you know they they can be available if you've if you uh, have, have any need for for having the the text on screen as the the person speaking um <clears throat> that's that's one one use i've not trying to think of any other obstacles really um mainly you know password as you said we've said we've covered before haven't we password remembering yeah. password changing um then if phil's got any other no, and I think the caption is really, really clever. It's um, it effectively um, uses AI to understand what you're saying and puts it on screen as well as presenter yeah. and participants as well, which is very handy. It doesn't always get it right as subtitles are, but uh, it's pretty close. Okay. Thank you, Darren and Phil. I think we're about um, up in terms of time. 
Um, so uh, thank you to, to, to you for, for your sessions. Thank you everybody that attended and thanks for engaging with the session using the, the chat window as you, as you uh, have done. Uh, that's the idea of the RM seminars has been over the years. You know, we, we provide useful content, um, but we also allow you to have a platform to, to collaborate and share information with each other. So it's really good to see that uh, happening as we went through the session. A uh, couple of closing comments. Um, there was a Google webinar yesterday. Some of you have been asking about that. That is uh, available on our website. If you want to to, to watch a recording of that, uh, feel free to do that. Um, and the FAQs that we've been working through today and yesterday uh, will have responses to, to those questions and any that we've not been able to answer to, uh, today in the session on there too. If you've got any questions about anything that we've covered today or you want us to expand on our answers a little bit, um, then do contact us with some contact details on the screen there. Um, and if you've got any questions about how RM can help with that DFE initiative, then uh, either contact us there or if you want to talk directly to your account manager, that is, uh, that's something that you can do as well. So that brings the, the session to an, an end. Thank you for your, uh, your time today and do stay safe and well. Thank you very much.